the first prototype scope that I build here is now completed. I used a book from 1979 that I picked up from a second-hand bookshop. This is the book here, and it's uh, How to Build Your Own Solid State Oscilloscope. I've come across this uh, author before, F.J. Rea, because built other kits that he's um, written books on. He's very good. Uh, yeah, I know nothing about this chap. Um, I tried to do some research on him uh, to find out a bit of a backstory on him, but I couldn't find anything, to be honest. But he was pretty prolific in the late 70s. Uh, well, right through the 70s, he wrote loads of books. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of his uh, project books. I highly recommend you go on Google and you find some of these old books. Uh, you'll find them easy enough. It's called The Bernard Bab Babini. Now, that was the publisher. Uh, I think they're still around, actually. But it's very hard to get these original books because some of these, like for this one, for example, I don't think they actually print it anymore. So the only way you can get hold of this book is to get a second-hand one. And they do come up. This book I got for a few pence in a in a second-hand bookshop, but I've seen some of this version and others going up on eBay for ridiculous amounts of money. So, but you know, so be careful. Don't end up paying thirty pounds for a book or something. It's just not worth it. I couldn't find anyone that had built this actual project. I found one person on audio f forum of some sort that said that he'd started to build it but never finished it for some reason. There's no telling. If it'll work or not, you know, you might, for example, you know, there are a couple of mistakes in here where the resistor values are not, not the right values, and I've had to change those. Um, but, you know, that that's that's something you can just, if you know anything about it, you can just see that it's wrong here. Yeah? But that's a print error. That that wasn't an error by the chap himself. So so that's the thing. You, But you want to ch you want to find that out. I'll just show you what the tube looks like. So that's... Exactly the same tube. I got this from a company called Landgrex, and they sell a whole bunch of old valves and cathode ray tubes. This is quite an expensive project, by the way. When you build something like this, you're not building it because you're going to save money by, you know, not buying a new one. But the frequency range of this is about from about 50 hertz reasonably to up to about uh, 20 kilohertz but that's it it's not a very versatile oscilloscope but if you're just doing audio work it's fine I mean uh, this is ideal for doing audio work it, it, it does everything you need really if you wanted to buy one that covered that range I mean you can get them now like uh, tiny little things from China you know for like 20 quid or something so this is not a project uh, that you would take on if you wanted oscilloscope to cover the audio range because you can buy them yeah but this is a project to take on if you want to understand how oscilloscopes work and you want to understand the circuits behind them and, and uh, how they actually are put together and the physics behind it if you want to understand that then this is a great project you'll learn so much in a later video I'm going to go through all the circuits and the diagrams just like I did in my recent one with the power supply unit I did, I'm going to do a, a more in-depth one with all of the circuits in this scope so that you can see how the whole thing worked. So what, I'll, what I'm going to do now is just show you um, something that you can do. If you've got, what you can do here is I've built, a, to test this out, I wanted to do something called uh, um, Lissajou figures. If you want to measure the frequency of a, of a signal, what you can do is you can... Uh, have a fixed signal that you already know of and I've built one so what I did was I built a little oscillator so what this what that little oscillator that's a little oscillator it's a very simple circuit so I've got 3.5 kilohertz um, signal here from this this uh, oscillator so when I switch this on you'll see that signal and we'll know it's 3.5 kilohertz yeah so what we're going to do with with that is we're going to um, plug in our signal gen, imagining that, that our signal gen is some device under test, and find a frequency on that signal gen, which is a multiple of this frequency. Now, what's interesting with Lissajou figures, if you run one signal on the x-axis and another signal on the y, it produces, like, if the frequency is the same, you'll get a circle. Um, the explanation of that I, I could probably leave to another video. If it's a circle, it means that the frequencies are identical. Now what's interesting with Lissajou figures, if it's not a circle but like two loops, then that's a, a doubling of the frequency or, or a, a dividing by two of the frequency. And then if it's a tripling, 
if you see triple loops, then you've got uh, three times the frequency. So you can see uh, by actually looking at how many loops you got, you can tell what the frequency of it is of the device under test. So that's what we're going to do, just to show you that it's working basically. So I'm going to switch that on now. Just wait for it to warm up for a bit. There we go, so now it's just warmed up. Now that's the thing with this uh, analog scope, uh, the actual tube has to warm up. Um, it's, a, it's, it's the tube that's in it is actually a tube of the day. Let's just turn the brightness down because that might not be, might be too bright for the camera. So I don't know if you can make that out. We've got there a, a sine curve so I can adjust it there slightly. So that's the 3.5 kilohertz. Now I can show you that the frequency range here changes. So that's going in quite a, you know high res, and we can we can change the the frequency range there. So uh, and I can modify the frequency range. Find control here. So just showing you some of these controls on the scope, so you can see it. It's all working. The bright that's the brightness. So we can put it out to full brightness there. And back it off a little bit. This does the focus control. So that's your focus control on there. Um, this is your up and down, your uh, your X, Y axis control. So you can actually move the whole um, gun. You can move the gun left or right. So that's basically changing the voltage of the, um, the X, Y plates. Uh, on top of... So on top of that would be this, the X, Y time base. So you can actually move the whole time base... A little bit so that's what that's doing so you can call that the x and y movement and then of course you've got the input which is changing the uh, the y deflection plate so the voltage on the y deflection so you can move the the voltage so you can move the display up and down so that's what those controls do what else have we got um what does this control do this control does a bit more on the focusing so it although it's 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 hard to sort of see that there's much change here but that will actually focus it a little bit more than that one does a, a coarse focus control and this one does a kind of fine focus control so by adjusting those you can get a nice sort of picture so that's what those two controls do the one at the bottom here is uh, the magnitude so I can reduce the size now of course it's starting to lose I've got another control that's going to fix that basically uh, we can change the amplitude with this control. Now, when we get down to a certain point, the trigger. There's a. I'll explain the trigger in another video. You have to trigger on the uh, the amplitude. Now, when you've got a low input voltage, the trigger has a job to to find it. So you, you're getting this effect. But then I there's another control that is introduced in the project itself. This is a an addition you can add yeah to stop it rolling like this yeah. Now, if I was to back that right off, you'll see it's rolling all the time there now. Now, without that control, you'd have to try and find it. And, and look, I'll just show you what happens. Because when you build this, you don't actually need that. You don't need this bottom control if you're happy to put up with this. The rolling aspect of it. So, yeah, it's difficult. So what you can do is you can... Um, add a little bit of extra circuitry to the project which actually will check the amplitude of the signal and, and whenever it's at a, a low value it will trigger the time base to start from the beginning again so by pulling that up making that you can actually trap it so that's um, that's called the trigger yeah on an oscilloscope so that's what the trigger does it traps it captures the amplitude of the input signal and it starts the time base at exact moment when the voltage on the input is at, is, at, is at a maximum low value. So that's what that does, so it stops the rolling here. Yeah? So, so that's really all the controls. So there's the amplitude, that was the rolling control. This one on the right here is the time base uh, amplifier. So you can, so here with the time base, with the, that's the time base with no amplification, you won't see anything. So. So now I'm giving more amplification, and that's so you can see as I increase the time base, it, it expands the signal as well. Now, because if you wanted to use this and calibrate this screen, then you'd have to 
decide on a fixed value of this, otherwise the calibrations are not going to mean anything when you're measuring frequency. But I don't want to use that f for that anyway. I mean, I've got other uh, scopes that I use for that anyway. This this really is to check signals, um, just to see that there is a signal and, and, and having a look. For example, if, if you're putting a sine curve through an amplifier, you want to see a clean sine curve. So this little box here will will give me a quick test if the if the signal is clean or not if the circuits that I put together in this sometimes they didn't work and I had to sort of rebuild them and things so that happens you know I mean uh, you can't always figure out what's gone wrong and you have to start again you know that's the nature of the beast with these kind of things so so don't worry and if you start the nice thing about this particular project and some of the older analog projects is that all the circuit boards Everything's like um, given its own circuit board. So, for example, in this, you've got the time-based circuit board, you've got the Y amplifier circuit board, you've got the trigger circuit board, and you've got the um, another piece of circuitry for the to, for bypassing the the time base. They're all things that can be, and also, of course, you've got the the circuit for the actual power supply circuit you've got two power supply circuits in this actually there's two power there's a low voltage power supply circuit and there's a high voltage power supply circuit now what's that might seem strange why not just buy a bigger transformer with several taps but what that the nice thing about having two transformers which i didn't really appreciate when i started building this was that you've got two separate circuits then you've got you've got a low voltage power supply circuit and a high voltage power supply circuit so why is that advantageous well the reason it's advantageous is like all the other circuits they're all individual units so you can build them and test them in isolation so the first thing you do when you build this is you build the low power the low voltage power supply you test it make sure it's working check all the voltages when you know that's done you can tick that off you know that's that's fine that's perfect you've got that that under your belt it's done so then you move on and you build the high voltage power supply when that's all done and you've tested all the voltages and you know that that's correct that's another thing you can tick off your checklist you've done that that's that's two circuits out, out of the way what you do is you put your tube in you connect your uh, high voltage power supply to your tube and then you see a dot you should be able to move the, the x and y controls the voltage plates and see a dot moving up and down and back and forth then you know that that works so then now you know the tube works the low voltage the high voltage power supply circuit works the tube circuit works which basically tests the tube as well at the same time so you, you ticked all of those off so now you really it gives you a lot more confidence then in the project because you know you've got a working tube you've got a working circuit that's activating the x and y uh, deflector plates in the tube that 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 circuitry is working and really that circuitry is really simple it's just a bunch of resistors yeah and a and potential the two potentiometers it's two potentiometers and uh, and there are some uh, ad uh, fine adjustment of potentiometers inside the circuit but it's all very simple so once you've uh, built that circuit then you've got all of that out of the way you can tick that off so once you've got that, the next thing you build is the time-based circuit. And that, again, can be all tested and checked. You tick that off. Then finally, uh, of all the major components, when, you, oh, sorry, when you've got your time-based circuit, then you'll see a line across the street. So you come to a point where you've just got this, because you haven't built your, um, your Y input, the Y circuit yet. You haven't built that. You've only built your time base, but once you've got that, you know your time base is working. Yeah, you see that straight line, and you can adjust the, adjust it. Great, that's working. So that's out of the way. Then the next thing you build is your, your Y input circuit to handle the deflection of the up and down. And then uh, w when you've done that, you can put a signal in and increase the Y amplitude. And when you see that, then you know your scope is built. Obviously, it's going to be rolling. It's going to be rolling because you haven't built that yet. So the last thing you build then is the trigger. So you build a trigger circuit, which is a really t easy circuit. I'll explain how all these circuits work in a late, later video when I go through building the next version of this. So uh, there's your trigger. So you've built your trigger now. So then th that's really the whole thing. Um, the, whole, the whole scope is working then. So now 
now that we've gone through how sort of basically how you build one of these in very summarized form um, I'm going to show you the uh, the result of actually bypassing the the y the, the x time base here by directly putting the signal into the x axis now the signal I'm going to put in as I said before is a is from the signal gen and that's about 3. Point, around 3.5 kilohertz so I want to match the the frequency of my oscilloscope to show you what happens when the two frequencies match when the two frequencies match you should see a circle as I said before so let's just plug that in and, and see what happens okay it's going to it's going to need some adjustment okay now when we see a circle we know that the two frequencies are identical so and their revolving circle that's just this is called the Lissajou figure now okay there we go so that's that's what I wanted to show you those frequencies now are identical now if I look at the uh, the actual signal gen is, is, is moving so it's not a great signal gen it keeps uh, it keeps diverging off the frequency but if I get it if I could get it, if the sig gen didn't keep moving, then you'd have a, a fixed, like more or less, we've got a fixed image there now. So that's exactly what you want to see. So this shows the scope working really nicely. It shows that it does what it's supposed to do. I showed you the, the, the quality of the sine curve before. Now I'm showing you another sine curve that we now can see is identical. Now, if I read off the frequency now, it's showing me 3.68 kilohertz so it's not quite 3.5 it's 3.68 according to the sig gen that is uh, we're assuming the sig gen's well calibrated it might not be <laughs> none of my gear is new it's all old second hand stuff so it might not be accurate uh, but if it was then that's what what we'd be saying we'd be saying that okay look that, os that oscillator I've built is now 3.68 now Let's say that we've got the oscillator now, we know it's 3.68 and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to now change the signal generator to imagine that it's something that's twice the frequency and I'll show you what happens when something's twice the frequency you're going to get loops so let's see, let's see what happens, I'm going to change that now Okay, so now you can see that there's two loops now. That's showing you there. Uh, now, with Lissajou figures, here, we've got, we can tell how many, what the frequency of now of, of what's on that signal gem, because we've got two loops, therefore, we're going to say that that's half the frequency now. So, when we look at the sig gen, it's actually showing 1.8. So, that was roughly about half. So, yeah, we had 3.6, so now we've got, just quick get the calculator. So on the scope on the sig gen at the moment it's showing one point eight four three two. So if I double that we should get what we had before with the signal with the uh, with the same when it was the same frequency we should get that same number. So let's just uh, double that times by two. Okay, yeah, three point six eight. So we can see that that's exactly half the frequency of the one we had before. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it a bit more, and we see three, three loops touching the base. We've got two of these loops touching the, the base at the moment. So when I mean the base, I mean the bottom, the bottom section here, calling that the base. There's two loops touching it. When we get three touching it, which we will do in a second when I move that up that will give us three times frequency so now I'm gonna divide that again by two to get us and I'm gonna go I should we should see it roughly um, a point nine two point nine two we should see three of those so let's get wind it down to point nine two and just see if that works Yeah, that works really well. So, so you can see that these are quite—they're <laughs> quite fun to look at as well. I mean, they're fascinating. Uh, Lissajou figures are absolutely fascinating. I'm hoping that's not too bright for the screen. Let's just uh, take the brightness down a little bit so you can see it better. 
So there you have them. These are these are what are known as Lissajou figures. And I put the amplitude up. It, it speeds it up. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, when you put when I put the amplitude up here, maybe because it's triggering in some way. But yeah, so there you go. The number I'm showing here now is nine two one five four. So yeah, it's it's really almost identical. So it just goes to show. Now if I if I reduce that down now to half its value again, we should get four of those loops at the bottom. And then when you get past four, it becomes yeah, you can't really tell. So if I divide that by two again, now if I go down to 460 hertz, 460 say 460 point eight hertz according to that I should get four loops so let's go down right down now okay you can see one two three four there's four touching the bottom one two three four the ends actually count as one so if you can see one two three what does it say on there it says 460.9 so yeah so there you go if the sig gen wasn't actually showing me what the frequency is i could just work it out but of course once you get then if you try and divide it by two again you can't really it's impossible to see what's going on because you can see it's getting harder to see what's going on now but generally you'd probably only be looking at two times the frequency so you'd only see the two loops. You probably wouldn't go much further than that. But it, but it's an interesting. But it's just interesting to look at the actual um, the Lissajou figures anyway, because they're quite interesting. Actually, this works much better than I ever anticipated it would work. Um, I was actually because I couldn't find anyone who had made one of these. I was actually thinking it probably might not even work, you know. But I knew that I'd learn a lot in the process, and I did. So it was it's good. It's it's well worth it. The other interesting thing about building one of these is I learned a lot about enclosures and how to build enclosures in a better way. This particular enclosure isn't perfect, but in building this enclosure, I figured out a way of, of now building enclosures that are going to be really nice. So uh, that was a really big bonus in this project, was actually figuring out how to build these enclosures. Now it's not. This is not bad. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not, it's not ugly in any way. I mean... What what I did is is the measurement that I got wrong and the way I cut some of these pieces I got a little bit wrong. Um, the bending went really well. I, I I made a little break that I've used on other projects anyway. It's like a metal break and that gives you a nice this nice bend around the edge here. So um, so that was that was useful in actually figuring out how to make these enclosures. So i'm built and the next project i'm building is a small power supply it's going to be a, a dual voltage power supply so that'll be the next project and that then will nicely be able me to build another of these enclosures i'll see you in the next uh, video